There we go. Questions from the homework. Page 289-ish. Yo. 10. Love to. Okay. Often what they're going to do is they're going to give you part of a graph. So can you all look at number 10? And I think I like this question. Okay. Um, you want to have in your mind, Victoria, this bad boy, there's sign, and this one I always have a tougher time drawing. This bad boy, there's cosine. Okay? This is what I yelled at you last day. I said, this is what we need to know. Because when I glance at this, I think they've given me a fraction of one trig wave, not a whole wave. And I think starting up high, I think it's cosine. So the first thing that I would be saying is, even if they hadn't said cos right here, I would be going, that's cos. What's my amplitude? So I would say this for starters. Five cos. Now I want to find b. Remember, b is 2 pi over the period. And what I need to do is figure out what the period is. What fraction of a cosine wave have they given me here? I think half a wave. That much. See it? And that's pi by 9. Half the wave is pi by 9. How long is the whole wave? Don't overcomplicate it. Half the wave is 1 pi by 9. How long is the whole wave? 2 pi by 9. Is that okay? Yeah? So I'm going to say this. B is 2 pi over 2 pi by 9. How do I divide by a fraction? Flip it and multiply. Yeah, dividing is not times. It's flipping and multiplying. So this is going to end up being 2 pi times 9 over 2 pi, which is quite convenient. The 2 pi's cancel. And in fact, b ends up being 9. I think that's what it should say in the back. Okay. Uh, similar for this one, by the way, for number 9, what fraction, oh, sine wave starts at 0. What fraction of the sine wave is this right here? I think half the wave. So I can get the period. Amplitude I can certainly get. Okay. Any others? Yep. 12B. Any before uh, 12? Earlier stuff went good. Did I assign 12B? Yeah, I did. Okay. Can you all get out your calculators, please? And we want to make sure we're in radians. And you got 12a OK, yes? You said it was going to be equal to y equals 8 sine of uh, the period is 3. So the period is 12 t. Now, remember I said that b is 2 pi over the period. What's the period here? If you're really lazy and you really want to do this quickly, you can just put a 2 pi over 12 there because we're going to go to our calculator. Now, what is 2 pi over 12 in lowest terms? Okay, on your test, if this is multiple choice, the answer to pick from would be pi by 6. But I'm less interested in A. For part B, then, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to my calculator, and I'm going to put a 4 in for T. I'm going to, that's why I said I had to get my calculator out. I'm going to go like this, 8 sine oh it opened the bracket for me quite conveniently 2 pi times uh, t uh, 4 and then divided by 12 because there's a 12 in the bottom that actually tells you how high the tide is how high the sea level is uh, 6 point to the nearest tenth 6.9 meters that's it uh, the other thing they can do is instead of giving you an x value, because this is sitting where our x normally is, 
they could give you a Y value. We'll talk about how you'll handle that. I think we'll be talking about that today if there wasn't one in the homework. Any others? Okay. So last day I gave you kind of my little trick for uh, sketching trig functions. I said I actually just draw it with the axis with no numbers and then I just adjust the, the scale, the, the numbers. Unfortunately, that starts to break down as a trick in today's lesson. Can you please turn to lesson nine? Graphing trig functions or transformations of trig functions, part two. All we looked at yesterday was expansions and reflections. Well, expansions, compression, stretches and shrinks and flips. And I said to you, by the way, when it comes to trig, we don't do horizontal flips very often at all. And you'll see why in a while. In this lesson, we're going to consider graphs of sine and cosine that look like this. In particular, we're going to start to have slides. But we have to give them special names. Okay? So in the first part, we're going to concentrate on C and D. Describe how this graph here compares with this graph. How has this graph been moved? Troy. 30 degrees to the right. How has this, don't write that down. How has this graph been moved? Is the 2 inside next to the x? How would I show that it was inside next to the x if it was? Okay, we're going to put, we're going to be a little fussy. It would have to be in brackets. It's not, so it's vertical to what? Two up. Okay. What about here? 60 degrees left, one down. What about uh, here? This one first. 45 degrees right, and not 45 degrees, but 45 up because it's next to the Y and everything's backwards. We're going to give these different names, which is why I said not to write that down. We call a horizontal slide a phase shift. We would actually say this has a phase shift of 30 degrees. Skip the second one for a second. The third one has a phase shift of negative 60 degrees. Or you could say 60 degrees to the left. I'll take either or. Or you could say 30 degrees to the right, but we're calling it a phase shift. This has a phase shift of 45 degrees to the right, so positive 45 degrees. Having said that, we're going to get tired of writing the words phase shift. I'm going to use PS as my abbreviation, if that's okay. What did you say this one was? Two up? Okay, when you move a trig function, a periodic function, up or down, we call that a vertical displacement. This has a vertical... <laughs> displacement of 2. <sighs> I don't feel like writing vertical displacement. D period, D period? Okay. D period, D period of negative 1. Or you could say, Justine, 1 down. I'll take both. vertical displacement of negative 45. Ah, positive 45. OK. So let's look at this little chart here. Let's do the horizontal phase shifts first. What's the, hor what's the phase shift here? It's a trick question. None as a number, please. Zero. 
None as the number is zero, right? Uh, what's the phase shift here? Pi by four. What that does is it takes your letter S, the sine curve, and moves it pi by four to the right. What's the phase shift here? Zero. What's the phase shift here? Negative 3 pi by 2. And now we're going to try and generalize this. What's the phase shift here? C. What's the phase shift here? Still C. What you're going to have to watch out for, again, is an alarm bell if this B is not factored out. It's C as long as you have this lovely little set of brackets right there. If the B is not outside the brackets, we'll have to do our little alarm bell. What's the vertical displacement here? Zero. How about here? Zero. How about here? Five. How about here? Negative pi. How about here? D and D. That one I kind of like because I think vertical displacement D works for me. A for amplitude works just great for me. B for period. Well, B and the letter P kind of rhyme. Okay, start. Uh, C for phase shift. I got nothing, but it's phase shift. Okay. It says, would you expect something similar for cosine? Yep. What about for tangent? Ugly cousin. Turn the page. So, this page here is one of those lovely bookmark, post-it, star, asterisk pages. This is a summary of all of the graphing of sine and cosine. It says this, changing the parameter C on sine and cosine, as long as it's all factored, results in a horizontal phase shift to the right, if C is positive, to the left, if C is negative. Changing the parameter D will do the following. A vertical displacement up if D is positive, a vertical displacement down if D is negative. You can also get the vertical displacement from a graph using this equation. Now this doesn't this looks kind of confusing. You'll see it does make sense once you have a picture in front of you. Ah, here's the money page right here. That's the one that summarizes all of our graphing. Let's see if we can understand all of this. First of all, for sine and cosine of y equals a sine or cos of b bracket x minus c plus d. The amplitude, we said highest minus lowest divided by 2. How far apart are they? Divide that by 2. That's your amplitude. <laughs> Period, 360 over the absolute value of b or 2 pi over the absolute value of b. Why absolute value of b? Because we said that period is never what? Never negative. Oh, and amplitude. Why did I say absolute value of a? Because amplitude is never what? Negative. The phase shift is c. And it's the same stuff as last unit. If you have a minus and then the positive number right there, it's to the right. If you have a plus and a positive number right there, it's to the left. The vertical displacement, D, up or down. And you can find D by doing that. And we'll talk about how that works in a second. We're going to add one more thing, by the way, over here. If B, sorry, if the period is 2 pi over B, what's B? 2 pi over the period. I always write that in because if they want me to find the equation, they'll tell me the period and I need to find B. If they give me the equation, they'll tell me B and I need to find the period. And both of those are totally fair game. Tangent, ugly cousin. Amplitude, nuh uh, all reals. A technically represents a vertical expansion or a vertical compression but we really aren't going to deal with it all that much. Period is not 360 or, or, or 2 pi over b. It's 180 or pi over b. Period is pi. 
Yeah, okay, you can have a phase shift and a vertical displacement, but we really don't deal with that much either. We will deal with this a bit because this here and the period change will move the asymptotes and the domain around. Instead of the gaps being at 90, pi by 2, if you slide it sideways, the gaps move with it. And that, to me, will be a good question. I might say, hey, where are the new asymptotes? Or what's the new domain? Remember, for tangent, the domain was what x couldn't be. And the asymptotes were, take the domain, and instead of not equal to, equal to, or that was where the asymptotes were. Let's try some of these. But this is a good page to you know keep track of. Example 3. Consider equations of that form there. Where a and b are 1, so we're not going to add an amplitude or a, ver or, a, or a period change yet. Write an equation which represents a cosine function having a horizontal phase shift 75 degrees to the right. Well, y equals... What's the amplitude here? Oh, they told me 1. I'm not going to bother writing it, Amy. What trig function do they want me to write? Let's write the word cos. What's B here? 1. So what's the period? Not 1. 2 pi. Okay. Bracket. 75 degrees right. X minus 75 degrees. Okay. And by the way, nice review of transformations as well. A sine function having a horizontal phase shift of 3 pi by 5 radians. Okay. Y equals, we said amplitude is 1 sine, bracket, 3 pi by 5 radians left, x plus 3 pi by 5, and then a vertical displacement 4 units up, plus 4. So... A good multiple choice question would be something like number four, where I give you an equation and I ask you to tell me probably two of the four. I'll say, tell me the phase shift and the vertical displacement, or the phase shift and the period. I can make lots of nice wrong answers because there's four different numbers in there for you to pick from. Good little multiple choice question. So let's list everything here. It wants us to find the amplitude, the period, the phase shift, and the vertical displacement. What's the amplitude? Sorry? Two. What's the period? It's not three. Two pi over three, remember? Period is 2 pi over b, b is 2 pi over the period. So 2 pi over 3. And if that reduced, I would, but I'm good with that. What's the phase shift? You can either say negative pi, or you can say pi left. How do I know it's in radians? Not just because of the pi. If I could, it could be degrees, how would I show it was pi degrees? There's no degrees symbol. Okay, you'll notice I was very fussy here. I put this. I put the degrees on the 75. Vertical displacement. Negative four, or four down. B. Amplitude, period, phase shift, vertical displacement. What's the amplitude? 2 over 3 or negative 2 over 3? 2 over 3. Almost certainly if I gave you a question for amplitude on the test, I'll make it negative just to see if, who will pick the negative one, and I'll have that as an answer to pick from. What's the period? Well, I got to do some arithmetic. The period is going to be 2 pi over a quarter. How do I divide by a fraction? 
2 pi times 4 over 1. And now it's top times top, bottom times bottom. I guess the period is 8 pi, which makes sense to me because what we would have said last unit was horizontal expansion by 4. So instead of 2 pi, 8 pi, 4 times around the circle. Okay. Phase shift. Pi by 12. You can write to the right if you want to. Vertical displacement, positive 3, or you could say 3 up. Okay? Now, before we turn the page, before we move, let's go back to this one here. What's my vertical displacement? 4 down. So remember the cosine graph? which started up high, you would move it the whole thing four down. What's my amplitude? Two. If I was sketching it, from once I moved everything four down, I'm not going to go one up, one down, one up, one down. What's my amplitude? Two up, two down, two up, two down. I, I, would, I would keep that in my mind as well. Phase shift, I would move everything two pi by three to the right. So instead of starting right on the y-axis up high, I'd be starting 2 pi by 3 over. And I'd have to do something with a period. We're going to talk about how you sketch these, but we're going to do that mostly later on a bit this class, mostly next class. All right. Example 5 says find the amplitude, the period, the phase shift, and the vertical displacement says y equals 2 sine bracket 3x plus pi minus 4. Boom! Alarm bell should go off. Matt, why would an alarm bell go off here? Not factored. This I like. I like this question. You know what? I love this question. I love this question. I guarantee on your test, I'm going to give you sine or cosine, or tangent, unfactored. And I'm going to say, hey, what's the phase shift? And the first answer I'll put is negative pi. Phase shift is not negative pi. I need to factor this 3 out. I need to rewrite this, which is why I left a space as 2 sine bracket, factor the 3 out, bracket, 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 minus 4. What the heck is going to go in here? Well, Ari, when I factor a 3 out of a 3x, I'll get an x. When I factor a positive out of a positive, it'll stay positive. When you're factoring, you're dividing pi over 3. Okay. So, what's my amplitude? 2. What's my period? 2 pi over 3, 2 pi over b. What's my phase shift? Negative pi over 3 or pi over 3 to the left, but certainly not pi. Vertical displacement, negative 4. Is there an alarm bell in b? Do I need to yell? Try B on your own. Oh, fraction. Don't panic. Are you becoming mediocre at fractions now? I like it.
I got those. I'm willing to bet that at least five or more of you are just bursting to ask me where the heck that came from. So if you're not sure, you can ask. I don't mind explaining it. Maybe everyone... Is, yes. Okay. When you're factoring, you're dividing. So when I factor a 2 out of here and out of here, it's the same as dividing by 2, which is why there's no more 2. And dividing by 2. Dividing by 2 means putting an extra 2 in the denominator. There's already a 2 down there. Oh, you end up with a 4 down there. So if this had been a 3, 6, this had been a 7, uh, 14, okay. See, we are becoming mediocre at fractions. Turn the page. Tougher, much tougher, much more challenging is writing the equation if they give you the graph. If I give you the equation and say, tell me about the graph, all you have to do is memorize what the letters stand for. If I give you the graph and say, tell me the equation, you really got to follow along. And so I'm going to slow down. I'm going to say, if you're tired, I did a yell a little while ago, wake up. Think up. Yes, Ari, you too. Okay? So here's what it says. Graphs A through D represent the same trig function, and they do. And somebody, I think it was in this class last day, said something. They said, Mr. Duick, I noticed sine and cosine look the same. You could slide sine over, and it looks just like cosine. As it turns out, any sine graph, I can write that as a cosine equation if I want to. Any cosine graph, I can write that as a sine equation mathematically if I want to. And not only that, any positive sine graph, I can write that as a negative sine graph if I want to. And any negative cosine graph, I can write it as a positive cosine graph. Any graph has at least four equations, any trig function. You can write it at least four different ways, and that's without going all coterminal. Like that's without going phase shift, all co there's an infinite number of answers. So this graph here, we're going to write four different equations, and we're going to use the instructions to kind of tell us our starting point. It says this. It wants us to write this as a sine graph where A is positive. So it wants us to write this as a positive sine graph. Now, a positive sine graph, over in the little margin right up here, do this. That's a positive sine graph. Except what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase that line there. Because now we're sliding graphs back and forth. What I'm going to say is a positive sine graph is where this graph starts in the middle and goes up. So I'm going to look along here. and Now, it's in the middle in terms of its height right there, but what direction is it heading? Down. The first point that it's in the middle and starts going up is right there. I'm going to put a little red dot right there. That's where I'm going to sort of start my stopwatch, as it were. Justine, that's where I'm going to start to count this graph from. I could start all over the place, which is why you can get so many different equations. But since they wanted positive sine, I know sine looks like this. Can you see it? Okay. Write it in this form. Y equals. What's my amplitude? Okay. Total distance is 8. Half of that, 4 sine. The period is 2 pi, so b is 1. They didn't put a b here. Here's what I want you to notice. If I want to draw this, as, if I want to write this as a positive sine graph, what's my phase shift? Uh, I got to think. How many squares make up pi? Count. 6. So what's each square worth? Pi by 6. How many squares over to the right has this graph been moved? x minus 2 pi by 6. And I'll draw a little arrow. I'd write that as pi by 3, but just in our notes so we know what the heck we did. We count it. That's that graph as a positive sine function. What if they want me to write it 
in part B. Now in part B, they still want me to write it as sine, but Alex, they want A to be negative. They want me to write this as a negative sine function. Again, I'm going to do a little sketch. Negative sine looks like that. And again, I'm going to get rid of this axis just to remind myself that's the shape that I'm looking for. So I'm going to look around and find where this graph is middle high, but heading downwards. And I think the first point is that guy. Yeah? y equals amplitude 4 oh heading downwards negative sine bracket x what's my phase shift now how many squares 4 left or right, plus 4 pi by 6s, because that's what each square is worth. By the way, would I write 4 pi by 6? What would I write if this was on a test, if I gave this to you as a multiple choice? 2 pi by 3, I'll do a little arrow. 2 pi by 3. Okay? Dylan, here's what this really means. If you graph that on your graphing calculator as y1, and you graph this as y2, only one graph would show up. They're the same graph. Oh, by the way, back to here. If I had wanted to, I could have actually started counting right there. Is that also where it's in the middle and goes up? So you could have Jesse phase shifted one, two, three, four, uh, a bunch of more squares over. Let's decide from now on we're going to try and keep our phase shift to the smallest, easiest one. I had a student about five years ago who delighted in phase shifting about 5,000 off the page every time and making me double check that his math was right. It was Willie. His math was right. And after about three quizzes, it was stopped being funny and just started being annoying because I had to go do all this arithmetic. You can phase shift back and forth just so all of our answers look the same. Closest phase shift to zero, please. Um, not only can I write this as positive sign, not only can I write this as negative sign, I can write this as a positive cosine equation. Write this as a cosine where A is positive. Now, again, I'm going to do my little sketch. Positive cosine looks like that, but I'm going to get rid of this. I'm looking for where this graph is up high. It's up high in two locations. Here, or here. This is the closest one to zero, isn't it? I think, Justine, I'm going to put a big red dot there. That's where I'm going to start counting this graph from. If I do that as my reference point, it's going to be y equals positive. What's my amplitude? Still four. Cosine. What's my period? Still two pi. So what's B? 1. Bracket. X. What's my phase shift this time? Tyler? Left or right? So what am I going to put here? Minus 5 pi by 6. Uh, could also have done plus 7 pi by 6, and that would start right here. Same graph. And this is the weird thing about periodic functions, Jesse, is there's an infinite number of equations that can be drawn because they repeat themselves, which makes it there should be an infinite number of equations that you can do because you could just keep moving over until it starts to repeat again, and you can kind of start your stopwatch right there, so to speak. Hey, I can write this as a negative cosine graph as well. Now, a negative cosine graph... Instead of starting up high, we'll start where? Yeah, it's going to look sort of like that. So I'm going to find somewhere. You know what? I think I'm going to pick this one. It's almost no phase shift at all. And in fact, what I'll teach you is whenever possible, if you notice that right on the y-axis, you're either up high or in the middle or down low, use a phase shift of zero. It's way easier. And adjust your positive or negative sine or cosine to it. 
This is going to be y equals negative cos, amplitude still 4, cosine x plus pi by 6. All the same graph, four different equations. Which one's right? Uh, it, they all are. Usually, I'll give you a hint. I'll say write it as a sine function or write it as a cosine function. Not always. Usually, one will be way easier. I'll be honest. If I had a choice, I might have picked D because it's a nice small phase shift. I find the mistake kids make the most is they count squares wrong because they're in a rush. Don't ask me why. Turn the page. Okay. Let's put the whole package together. You ready? Here is a trig function. I can write this as sine or as cosine or as negative sine or as negative cosine. It's all going to depend if I want to write it as sine where I start my stopwatch or as cosine or as negative sine or as negative cos. But we're going to have to have some things in common. What's the amplitude? Let's see. How high does this graph go? One. How low? Negative five. Total distance? Six. Amplitude? Three. What's the period? I find the easiest way to count most of these is from either a peak to a peak or a trough to a trough. Yes, those are the actual fancy words. How many squares apart is that? Count carefully. Twelve? Is it twelve? Yeah? What's one square worth? Look at your scale. How'd you get that? How many squares make up pi? Three of them. So one square is pi by three. So if I hear you, the period is 12 pi by threes. Oh, this one I will tidy up. What is 12 pi by three in lowest terms? Four pi. Okay. I don't want the period. Right next to the period in the margin here, what's B? Because that's what's going to show up in our equation. What's B? What was the expression for B? 2 pi over... Okay, let's write that down. 2 pi over the period, which is going to be 2 pi over 4 pi. Oh, what's B? I'm going to write down here B equals 1 half. That's what's going to show up in my equation. Now, we're going to come back to the phase shift in a second. What's my vertical displacement? Now, the vertical displacement is where the center vertically of this graph is. How high are we? One. How low are we? Negative five. Find halfway between them. Now, while you're thinking that, look up. That's what this meant. Find halfway between the top and the bottom. That's how you find. Actually, there's an easier way. There's an easier way. Did we already get the amplitude, Alex? Then go three down from there. Or go three up from there. But that's your middle. What is the vertical displacement? Not two. Negative 2. You know what? All of you right now, put a little dotted line right there. I always do that. The vertical displacement is negative 2. And the reason that's so important is that's where the y axis, the x axis has been moved to. That's the middle of my graph. That's where sine is going to begin. Sine starts in the middle. And positive sine starts in the middle and goes up. That's the smallest possible left-right phase shift for positive sign. What is the phase shift? Negative. Pi by 3. Or pi by 3 to the left. Now I can write the equation, but I need to write big so I can't fit it in here. I'm going to write it right here. y equals <coughs> 
3, amplitude. Which trig function did we commit to here? Sine. B. A half. Bracket. X. Phase shift is pi by 3 to the left or to the right? Plus pi by 3. Close bracket, close bracket. Minus 2. That's that equation. B, sorry? Nope, B is positive. Period is always positive. B is going to be positive. And that's why I said we're not going to deal with the horizontal reflection very much at all. Hey, what if I wanted to write it as a negative sign graph? I'm going to change colors. I'm going to go blue. Negative sign still starts in the middle. But instead of heading up, which way is it head? You know what? Right there, folks. The equation's going to be nearly identical. Look up. Just watch for a second. The y is not going to change. The amplitude is not going to change. The sine is not going to change. The b, because the period, is not going to change. And the vertical displacement is not going to change. What is going to change? Two things. Negative. And my phase shift. How many squares to the right? How many squares to the right? Always counting from the y-axis, right, from 0. 1, 2, 3, 4. To the right, minus 5 pi by 3s. Sorry, what? Is that a question? C. Is this the same equation? Same, is this the same graph as the previous one? Let's write it as cosine. Everything but the phase shift is going to be the same. Amplitude, 3. Period, 4 pi. B, 1 half. Vertical displacement, Negative 2. Now, positive cosine starts where? Up high. Remember the little sketch that we did? Right there. Yes, you could start over here, but it wants us to do the smallest phase shift. You could start over here. It wants us to do the smallest phase shift. How many squares? 2 pi by 3s. So let's write it as a positive cosine. Y equals equals what? 3 cosine. B is a half bracket. X, uh, we're to the right, minus 2 pi by 3, minus 2. What if I want to write this in part D as a negative cosine graph? Well, okay. Y equals negative 3 cos. That's not going to change. I'll put a negative in front of the 3. The 1 half, the period, is not going to change. The X is not going to change. The minus 2 way over here is not going to change. Where would negative cosine start? Bottom? Uh, right there. Yes, Miguel, or right there, but that's further. How many squares, Miguel? Left or right? Plus 4 pi by 3s. If you were to graph all four of those equations very, very carefully, you'd get one graph.
Okay. Almost done. Turn the page. It says, consider sine and cosine. And there's A, B, C, and D. A, B, C, and D. Which of these parameters, A, B, C, or D, if you change them, affect the domain? Well, what is the domain of sine and cosine? All reals. Okay, all you guys like this, because you need to stretch anyways. Everybody, like this. Don't hit someone. And stretch while you're at it. Ah, feels good. Okay, here's my domain. If you change the amplitude, is that going to change your domain? We do this. Is that going to change the domain at all? No. What about, uh, what's the next one? B. If I change the period, now that might make it happen more often, but will that still make it all reals even if I squish it or stretch it? Okay, so that's not going to change the domain. Uh, what about the phase shift? If I move it left and right, will that change the domain? No. What about the vertical displacement? If I move it up and down, will that change the domain? You know what the domain of sine and cosine always is? All reals. I probably won't ask you that. Boring. Range. What's the range normally between sine and cosine? How low, how high? OK, so everybody, all of you, put one hand like this. There's negative 1. There's positive 1. There's your range. OK. If I change the amplitude, will that change the range? Ah, OK, let's write that down. A. OK, back to our normal range. If I change the period, that's horizontal, isn't it? I don't think that's going to change my range. OK. Uh, what about if I change the phase shift? If I move this back and forth, is that changing the distance between them? No. Uh, oh, D, vertical displacement. If I move this whole thing up or down, will that change the range? Yeah, because instead of between negative 1 and positive 1, the distance will be the same, but you might be between negative 2 and 0. Or, okay, so D does. Three is more obvious. Which one changes the amplitude? A. Which one changes the period? B. Ah. Which one changes the zeros? The what? The x intercepts. Okay. Now I got to think a little bit more here. When in doubt, because it takes all of one second. OK. If I change the amplitude, will that change the zeros? What about if I change the period by making this not as long or not as short? Will that move these three points? Yeah, I think the period will. So I'm going to add, say, B. What about the phase shift if I move that whole graph back and forth? Yep. What if I move that thing up or down? Yeah, in fact, I can move it so high that it has no zeros. Um, Uh-oh. What if I moved it so high that it had no zeros, but then put a huge amplitude in front of it? Could it get the zeros again? Turns out, actually, the amplitude, if there's a phase shift, can also change the zeros. No phase shift, amplitude won't do a thing. Sorry, I said phase shift. Vertical displacement, vertical displacement. If there's a vertical displacement, well, then the amplitude can also affect the zeros, because you could be so high that you have none, put an amplitude of 10,000 in front of it, and suddenly you do have a zero. It'll reach down that far. Um, <coughs> State the highest and lowest values of the function in terms of A, B, C, and D. So they want high values. That's x. That's x. I'm not even going to look at those. They're talking about vertical here.
what they're really saying is, tell me the range. Okay? For sine and for cosine, here's the range. The first thing you do is you move it up or down the vertical displacement. So let's pretend the vertical displacement is up, boom, to there. D high first, and then from there you go amplitude down and amplitude up. Let me say that again. Let me say that again. To find the range, Dylan, algebraically, and I probably might give you an algebraic one with no numbers. There's your vertical displacement, because that's the center of your graph. And from there, you go up amplitude, and you go down amplitude. The lowest you get is start D high and go down that far, less than or equal to Y, less than or equal to, start D high and go up from there. That's your range. The algebraic one is tougher. I'm just thinking right now what I should have done is skip B, gone to C first, and then D, B would have made more sense. But let's look at C. It wants us to find the range. Let's see if we can do this in our head. What's the vertical displacement? Negative 4. So the whole graph has moved 4 down. Look up. 4 down. We're right here. Negative 4. What's my amplitude? That means from negative 4, I'm going to go 3 up and 3 down. If I go 3 down from negative 4, what's my lowest point going to be? Negative 7. 3 up from negative 4? Ah. And now that we did that, maybe that makes a bit more algebraic sense. <laughs> Threw a lot at you today. Okay. Hopefully it ties in sort of to the transformation stuff that we've learned already. Except, Stacy, because these graphs are periodic, phase shift, vertical displacement, and the fact that there's multiple answers for an equation because they repeat themselves. Homework. Number one is good. Uh, number one, good, good, uh, good, because that's not in brackets. Alarm bell, good, alarm bell. Two, okay, and then we're going to practice getting the equations. So number three. Four. Victoria, this is very similar to the one that you asked me. This is only a fraction of a wave. Okay. Um, it wants you to graph it as a positive cosine. Where does positive cosine start? You'll have to figure out how long one whole wave is. But again, Victoria, I think they gave you a half wave because I think the whole cosine graph looks like that. So I think half the period, double it, there's your whole period, and now you can figure out B, okay? Five is good. Which graph haven't I talked about? Ugly cousin. I'm going to assign six with the expectation. I'll probably have to talk about it, but see if you can get it, okay? Remember what I taught you about tangent. Um... Seven, I'm going to say, how about A and D? Eight and nine, no. Uh, ten. Okay. There you go. Graphing trig functions. <laughs>